episode of Grape Expectations with myself, Andrew, from Vintage 82. Today we're going to speak about something slightly different. Today we're going to speak about sake. I get so many questions, I get asked so many times about sake. How is it different to wine? Is it different to wine? This is just a very, very big, brief, quick introduction to sake. So sake is actually Jap Japan's um, oldest, um, oldest alcoholic beverage. In sake itself means alcohol. That's all it means. So technically, anything that's got alcohol in it can be sake. But what we usually refer to sake is rice wine, even though it is made in a more similar fashion to beer than actually wine. So how do they make sake? What they do is they ferment rice. So they actually grow special rice in the rice paddies, they rinse the rice, then they steam the rice and ferment the rice with a very special yeast called Seishi Kobu. And then they ferment it and it produces alcohol in a similar way that beer is made. But there's a really, really cool bit about sake that shows the level of quality of sake. So there are different levels of quality and that would come from the amount of polishing of the rice. Yep, that's it. So they actually polish away the impurities of the rice. So the lowest level, or let's say table sake, which is called futsushu, what they do is they polish away around or less than 30% of the rice. Therefore, for you to have a futsushu sake, you would have to have at least a remaining uh, amount of 70% of the rice. Then the next level, so if they polish away a little bit more of the rice and they leave a minimum of 70% of the rice, they would call that honjozu. If they further polish and they further mill away more and they leave around 60% of the rice, they call that ginjo. So if you see ginjo on the bottle, you know they have milled away at least 40% of the rice. And the highest quality is daiginjo. Now daiginjo, all, they actually polish away 50% of the rice. So they use the remaining 50%. That doesn't mean that they cannot polish away more than 50% of the rice, but the minimum criteria for a daiginjo would be 50% milled away. There's also sometimes written junmai, and this is often found junmai ginjo or junmai daiginjo, and that means that there is no added alcohol when making the sake. Now, what I have over here is one of the most premium sakis you can find. This is from a producer called Dasai, and it is called Dasai 23. And does anybody know what 23 refers to? You wouldn't believe it. So this is a Daiginjo, Junmai Daiginjo. So there's no alcohol added to this. It is a minimum of 50%. Um, rice milled away and the 23 actually refers to the amount of rice left so they have milled away 77% of the impurities of the rice leaving just 23% so they've only made this sake with the remaining 23% of the rice now we serve sake sometimes hot and or warm and sometimes we serve sake cold. And when do we serve it warm and when do we serve it cold? This is, in my opinion, it's a little bit of a, a personal preference. So serving warm sake on a cold winter's evening in a nice little cup warms, really warms the soul. It really does. Um, and what, ha what happens is when you warm sake, you actually reduce the alcohol. Uh, you soften the alcohol, so you reduce the alcohol, and you also reduce a little bit of the, the acidity, and you increase the sweetness of the sake. 
However, usually on the really premiums and super premium sakis, we prefer to serve them chilled or, or room temperature or, or, or slightly cool at around 15, 16 degrees Celsius. Um, so this sake, since it is a super premium sake, it is, I would say, one of the most um, premium sakis around. This one, I would definitely serve it chilled. And how, I mean, in what receptacle, what, what glassware do we use for sake? When you're drinking sake that's warm, I would probably go for an earthenware, something like this, or, or, or maybe even, if, let's be practical, maybe something like, a, a, if you don't have the, the right earthenware, proper sake earthenware, you can go for maybe a, a, something like an espresso cup, something small, where you, can, where, where you can cup it and keep it warm whilst you drink it. Sometimes you can even use a receptacle like this, which is a proper sake, um, uh, receptacle, you will hold it and, and drink just like that. If we are going to have our sake chilled, like we are going to have today, there are maybe three different glassware you can use. This is a little bit like a shot glass, and in Japan they don't usually use a stem, so many like this, this, this type of glassware or something, even a bit like this without a stem, so you know, a little bit of a maybe um, bowl shapes, a bit like a wine glass, or even something like this, which is um, maybe a bit more similar to what the earthenware looks like. My personal preference would be a tiny wine glass. If you don't have something this size, you can go for maybe your smallest wine glass. Don't fill it up too much. And exactly like wine, you can definitely Swirl it, get out all the aromas, smell it, and what's what is the main difference between sake and wine? It's the the, the flavors are, are extremely different. So sake is more on the delicate flavors, a lot of floral. We usually on the cold premium sake you get a lot of fruit and floral flavors, and then you got the umami flavors. Especially on the warmer sake, is that's where you get more of the umami, more of the richness, more of the uh, more of the softness in the in the in the warmer sake. Those that you heat it up on the on the on the premium ones, then they're a little bit more delicate. So what's important with sake is that it doesn't really interfere with the very delicate foods that they served. Um, I think this one is, is fantastic, it's really really soft, really delicate, definitely something I would have with, with Japanese foods, especially sushi. It's got this umaminess to it, this the fifth flavour that we call umami. Such, such a lovely beverage. It's something that I really enjoy, especially when I have Japanese cuisine. And I really suggest to each and any one of you to, you know, go out and, and try different sakis. Try them hot, try them warm, try them cold, see which ones you prefer. So, cheers to that.